Okay guys, um, I'm going to show you how I use Core Advantage, um, or at least, I don't know if I'm an expert, but um, I'll at least tell you what I do now. So basically what Core Advantage is, is we want to basically take data on the kids in all developmental areas. Um, if you look attached to the email I sent you, I sent basically all the different things that they are looking for, all the different um, sections, just to give me an idea on like what you should be taking data on. But it's pretty much the domains, like if you look here um, on the left-hand side, it's things like approaches to learning, like can they problem solve, can they plan, um, social and emotional development, like how are they working with adults, how are they working with other kids, how do they resolve conflicts, um, gross and fine motor, skills, um, speaking, listening, that sort of thing. So basically, if you look through here, it'll give you an idea on what you should be taking data on. But again, if you look at the email I sent you, it broke it down. So after you have that data, basically what you need to do is you need to come in and input it. So how you do that is once you're logged into the Core Advantage page, if you guys look on the left-hand side here, it says new observation. You just click that. Um, and you have two options. If you go down to the plus button here, it'll tell you either upload video or photo or add anecdote. Um, if you're just doing text, you could just click the add anecdote, but um, a lot of times you'll have taken a picture of it and you wanna upload it. Um, make sure you click the right one because unfortunately for some reason you can't go back and change it. Don't ask me why, but whatever. So I'm gonna upload a picture of one of my students' artwork um, that I took. You can also scan the stuff in too, but honestly, I've just been taking pictures because it's quicker. Um, so you click upload photo and video and then you just click where to get it from you can if you see here it tells you you can get it from like your google drive Flickr, google photos gmail but honestly last time i tried to do that it kept freezing on me so i got annoyed and i've just been saving the photos on my computer but of course you can do it any way you want um so i'm gonna upload a new photo so i'm gonna upload my student phoenix's artwork so then you just upload it. Okay, so now obviously I need to add something to this. So I'm gonna click on it. And now I'm gonna look here at the date. Since I'm assuming most of you guys did the same thing as me and didn't have access to this, this obviously is not, you're gonna have to go back with your data. So the picture here is from October 8th. So I'm gonna fix that. So I'm gonna click on the top left here and switch it back to October 8th when this actually happened. Okay, now this caption basically, just we're gonna just add a title what it is. Um, basically, I had my students look around with pretend binoculars we made and we were using our sense of sight. So here we're just gonna basically describe what we took the notes on and what we saw. So for my title, I'm just gonna put um, sight drawing and now I'm gonna describe exactly what happened. So the students were asked to draw a picture of what they saw using their sense of sight. We went out on the playground. It's hard to type and think, guys, I'm not gonna lie. Um, drawing a picture of, yes, you know, this is harder. It's easy when you don't have to do that, but they saw using their sense of sight on the playground. Okay, so that was like the just describing the situation. Now, what exactly happened? My student Phoenix drew a picture. Um, I'm going to say with some detail because if you'll see when we get to the ratings, it's going to ask about different types of detail. Um, obviously, I have like a, I can kind of tell what this is. He's supposed to, he supposedly drew a swing. Um, but it's not that detailed, but it's not just scribbles. So that's what I'm going to write. Phoenix drew a picture of the playground using some detail, such as we could see here, like he included the handles for the swing and the swing itself. And then I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be. He included some grass. So we're just going to write that. Um, if you see, he told me on the bottom what he wrote, but we want to look more on the work he actually did versus him telling me what he wrote. Such as the swing. And the, I don't know, what do you call those things? Handles on the swing. 
and the monkey bars. Oh, those are monkey bars. Okay. So, it would help if I could actually type. So, um, we could also note here, um, my goal usually is to try to get as many things from each thing as you can. So, for here, he did drawing, but he also wrote his name. So, we could write, he wrote his name using correct letter formation. Because now we can get data for both the drawing and the writing. So, we could get rid of two things at once. So once you have that, you can save it. Um, then you obviously go to the student ship to click who you want. So this was Phoenix. I click save. Now here's where you guys have to actually rate everything. So the point of core advantage again is to take data on each developmental domain and figure out where the child is. So if you click here, tags. Now this here, down here, it says my tags. You guys can ignore this. This was back from when I had a building box coach. You guys don't even need to worry about that. What you need to worry about is core advantage because this is what the DOE is looking at. So you're going to click that. Now we need to look at what we're actually going to rate. So here, this was creative arts, right? That was the first thing we looked. So we're going to click at creative arts. Now art itself. So we click this drop down menu. And if you look here, it'll give you the description of what you're looking at. You guys can read that on your own time. But looking at the ratings, okay. So basically, we want to find something that actually described what Phoenix did. Um, they told me when I went to, because I went to a training on this, that if a student's in between levels, rate the one below because they haven't quite mastered it. So you drop the one below. But here I'd say, well, if you're looking at like level three, it says an unintended result, what it looks like. This isn't unintended, this is clearly a swing. Number four, simpler representation with a few details. I'd say that seems pretty accurate because looking at level five, complex representation, like this is obviously a swing, but it's not very detailed. So I'm going to go with level four and then just click save. Now, again, I noticed that, like I said, we can put it as not just art. He wrote his name here too. So we can click two things. So we're going to grab something else as well. I realize you could click them all at the same time. I don't know why I did that, but whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. So then we're going to go to, think it's yeah language literacy and communication to get the writing so again we click the drop down menu and again it'll explain more detail here if you want to read that so what exactly did phoenix do well let's look at the ratings like here it says just writes discrete letter like forms no these are very clear so that's not going to be good number four says writes five or more recognizable letters or numerals that he certainly did the level above it combine something other than their name. So obviously that's not it because he wrote his name. So we're going to go with level four again. Um, so then that gives me two different points in both art and writing. Some things you guys will find, like especially if your kid's like playing in centers, you can get a lot of different, you know, areas covered with just one data point. Like say you see them playing a dress up center and they're, com they're communicating back and forth with their friends and they're problem solving. You could get more than one tag. But for this one, I just have two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click save to moments, do not send. Why? Well, the, weirdly enough, Core Advantage has a new component, which they used to not have, that makes it more like a social media app, almost like Class Dojo, but we don't need to do that because we're already doing Class Dojo. So if you'd use these, it would send it to the families if you put in their email address, but we're not worried about it, that right now. So you're just going to click save to moments, which will publish your thing. Now, if you guys want to go back and look at at what you've done so far. Now, unfortunately, I've only uploaded three things, but you can look at where it says assessments and it'll show you whatever you've inputted. So right now we just inputted a Phoenix thing. So if you look down, if I scrolled over to Phoenix, you'd see I didn't put anything else in yet, but if I scroll down, you'll see writing here, it says four. So this is the average. Basically the idea is you want to put in more than one data thing per child obviously so it just gives you an average of say i put like three different things in that phoenix had written this will be the average um it also will give you an idea of like what you haven't worked on because obviously it'll be blank and it gives the progress bar clearly i have zero right now because i've only put three things in but um it'll give you a breakdown just so you can kind of see where you're at um now that we actually will be starting on the correct time for period two we'll have a lot more data to look at you can also arrange it if you see here by the different types of data is a way to just look at it. Um, I'm going to show you guys just one more time how to do, if I wanted to put just a plain text one and it's a lot easier. Um, just click same thing, new observation, and then add anecdote. 
And then I actually will do one for today. So today I did handwriting and I worked with a girl, Emma, and she used a tripod grip while holding her pencil correctly. So I'm just going to put while doing a handwriting page, Emma correctly used a tripod grip on her pencil. So that's quick. Obviously, I'm only going to be able to write one thing on this, but it's a good point in data because I can tell that she's holding things correctly and she has good fine motor skills. So I'm just going to type that, click save. Okay, so now again, this student, I checked the date. It was today's date, so that's fine. It's happened today. I said a lot of our stuff's obviously going to be backdated. Um, click Emma and save. And now my tags, again, we're only clicking from Core Advantage. Don't worry about this stuff. If you guys have it, you probably don't even, because that was mine from the past. If I click Core Advantage, these are the Core Advantage points. It was language, literacy, and communication. Go down and drop down menu writing. And if you guys, oh, nope, hold on. I'm in the wrong one. That's for writing itself. We want to do the fine motor skill aspect of it. That's my fault. Sorry. So we're going to go back. Um... Here we go. So if we click physical health and development, that's where it is. Fine motor skills. Um, if we scroll down, I just told you guys she used a tripod. You'll see that's actually a level five. That's why I took the data because I just knew that. Click save. And again, we're going to click save to moments because we don't really need to worry about sending it because that's not what we're using this for. Now, what is moments? It actually if you guys want to see what you've done so far, this weirdly, again, this program changed a little bit. If you click moments, it'll show you the last few annotations that you put in. Now, it actually shows you all of them. So if you guys want to see some other examples of data I've put in the past, it actually has some of my stuff from before lockdown, the last time I used this. So if you want to see another example of an anecdote, here's one I took of one of my students in April 7th. Um, this must have been taken before oh, March 2nd, so it was before lockdown. But um, I had taken a picture of a child who had made a pattern. And as you could see here, I rated it on a pattern. So just to give you an idea of what some other things can look like that are not just writing, because um, these are very old ones. I had a student who was able to cut on a straight line here for fine motor skills. Um, so these are very dated, but it'll just at least give you an idea of what it looks like. Let's see here, tricycle, the students were able to pedal. That was a gross motor skill one. And if you could see here, guys, I actually meant to point this out, you can rate it for more than one child. So in this case here, it was these students. I had one, two, three boys that were pedaling at a time. You can select more than one child to rate it at. At this case, I had three. So when you click students, you would just click three kids instead of one, and it would save it for all three of them. Oh, so you like one or two more just to again give you an idea of what the annotations can look like um, and then again it's not always photos like here we had made a prediction graph um, and this student Orion made a prediction and explained it so I put it in an experiment so it could be a little bit more detailed so yeah that's about it there are other things here um, you guys don't have to worry about it because I'll get a lot of this stuff. Like I said, it's all set up like a social media app, which you don't need to worry about just the data. So honestly, you can pretty much ignore all this stuff here for now because you're not going to need to worry about it. Like the storyboards, the lesson planning, all that stuff. You guys can just ignore that for now. Um, so yeah, uh, that's about it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if you guys have any questions, I guess just email me. Thanks.